How to simultaneously achieve high power, dynamics and low fuel consumption. One way is to use a variable valve timing system, i.e. a system that, depending on the load, regulates the opening time or valve stroke, or both. Currently, most gasoline engines, both supercharged and naturally aspirated, use a variable valve timing control system. Despite its long service life, the valve control system is not problem-free. Owners of, for example, Audi, BMW, Volkswagen and Honda are well aware of this. Fiat designers came up with an original solution. In 2009, they showed a gasoline engine with variable intake valve timing, but without the participation of a camshaft. The valves are electrohydraulic controlled, multi-air, and the traditional shaft is left only for the exhaust valves. Thus, in one point for the cylinder head had 16 valves and only one camshaft, OHC. The idea was patented back in 2002, but the finished product entered the market only seven years later, i.e. in 2009. In general, Italians are famous for innovative solutions. Thus, the first production car with a diesel engine and a common rail injection system was the Alfa Romeo 156. But let's return to multi-air. The goal of the system is to improve the combustion process without losing high performance. Fiat says that thanks to electrohydraulic valve control, multi-air engines, at least in theory, have many advantages. They burn less fuel and emit less CO2 and other harmful substances. Optimal valve control when the engine warms up and internal exhaust gas recirculation, achieved by reopening the valves during the exhaust stroke, reduces HC-CO emissions by up to 40% and NOx by up to 60%. The multi-air system was used in both naturally aspirated and turbocharged engines. I have good news for you. Now, if you are planning to buy a used car, or learn more about your car, you no longer need to search for the information you need on the internet. We have collected everything in one place for you, on the website carme.pro. Here you can find out everything about the car, what brakes and at what mileage, any problems with engines, chassis or gearboxes, which trim levels are better not to mess with and how not to lose money buying a used car. You will learn all this on carme.pro. 0.9 Twin Air Slash R2, Alfa Romeo Mito, Fiat 500. 1.0 Slash R3 and 1.3 Slash R4, Jeep Renegade, Fiat 500X. 1.4 M Air Slash R4, Fiat Punto 3, Fiat Evo. 1.4 M Air Turbo Slash R4, Alfa Romeo Giulietta, Jeep Renegade, Abarth 124 Spider. 2.0 terabytes M Air Slash R4, Alfa Romeo Giulia and Stelvio. Fuel injection, distributed in 0.9 and 1.4, and direct in 1.0, 1.3, 2.0. Outside of Europe, you can find naturally aspirated 2.4 with multi-air in Jeep and Dodge cars. The first generation of M Air was produced in 2009 to 2012, the second appeared in 2012, and the engines of the Firefly family are already in the third generation of the system. The differences, among other things, relate primarily to the operation of individual valve control programs, there were five of them in the first generation. The multi-air system is also used under license by Jaguar Land Rover in the Igenium family of engines. How does multi-air work? The exhaust valves are controlled classically, by a camshaft, one, and pushers, two. What is unusual is the control of the intake valves. The camshaft has cams, three, that drive the piston, four. Engine oil under pressure enters an electromagnetic coil, five, which decides to direct the oil to the hydraulic pushers, six, which are responsible for opening the intake valves. Excess oil is drained through drainage channels. Problems and malfunctions. In practice, engines equipped with the multi-air system performed very well. But over time, problems emerged. Units with first-generation M-Air are most susceptible to malfunctions. The control module failed, which could result in serious expenses. The control module refers to the block with the intake valves. 
The first symptoms are noisy engine operation and the engine malfunction light coming on. The problem could arise both after 30,000 km and after 150,000 km. The good news is that engines with second and third generation multi-air are less vulnerable. It is better to entrust the maintenance of engines with M-Air to experienced specialists. If the module fails, it is better to replace it with a new one, even if the control mechanism of only one cylinder has failed. Repair usually consists of replacing the entire module, since it is most often impossible to restore it due to its design. It is not recommended to buy a used module, there is a big risk of throwing money away. Replacing a module is a complicated procedure. A special device is used for this, and at the end adaptation must be performed using a computer. As for operation, many mechanics recommend changing the oil every 8 to 10,000 kilometers, and also advise using products from Modal, Leaky Moly, or Miller's. Regular oil changes have a tremendous impact on the service life of the module, reducing the risk of subsequent costs. In addition, experts recommend cleaning or replacing the multi-air module filter during the second or maximum third oil change. Usually this is not a difficult task, although, for example, in a 2.0 terabytes engine, Alfa Romeo, in order to get to the module filter, you need to remove the cylinder head. If you have the opportunity to choose between Fiat cars with multi-air or T-Jet engines, then you should choose the latter. Problems with multi-air are not common, but they do happen. Add to this the more expensive and complex operation.